Good morning all. It's bright and early on Friday and I am spending the morning in Richmond. This is a place where I really haven't spent much time at all in recent years, but I used to know it very well because I went to university in Kingston, which is right next door. And I also used to have my office for my old recruitment company on Richmond High Street. So I remember riding my old Suzuki RF600 off to the office on Richmond High Street and just spending a lot of time in the area. It's also right next to Richmond Park as well, so it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the city. I'm going to couple up being in Richmond with following up on a recommendation from a good handful of you. Apparently there's a new place called Pistons and Cups and it's a workshop at the back and at the front it's a cafe so it looks like you can get your bike worked on, get your bike serviced while enjoying some breakfast. So I'll go there, have my very own breakfast and then later in the day I'll go and see Monica over in central London but I'll take you along with me because there's so many nice areas. I'll show you a bit of Richmond Park, show you what that area of London's like. And then I'll take you in to Central to have a bit of coffee with Monica. So there's no time to waste. It's 21 miles away from here, far southeast London in Belvedere, over to far southwest London in Richmond. And 21 miles may not sound like a lot, but trust me, in London, getting through the exact heart of the city, in a line east to west. 21 miles is a mammoth amount of miles to cover. I forgot how insanely brutal it is commuting through London. I used to do this exact commute from east to west on a daily basis before I realised it was just too far to travel from one end of London to the other because it took me one hour, 20 minutes and it's non-stop concentration the whole time, every single second, just stuff going on all around. And if you don't have your wits about you, oh, get yourself into trouble. But I made it. Pistons and Cups Motorcycles. I'll do a full front to back tour now. I've just grabbed a tea, so I'll sit down, chill out, and also warm up because I think this will probably be the last ride of me wearing basically my summer gear. I think this should be fine. So, bike is parked up outside on the pavement, and here it is motorcycle and scooter service and repair. Pistons and Cups Motorcycles. 
This is a, a genuine coffee shop. I thought maybe it'd be a garage to just do a few simple coffees, but no, this is probably almost more coffee shop than with a, a garage, a workshop behind it, because they've got a full setup of coffees, teas, and they've also got a proper menu as well. They've opened up the back so I can see what it's like through there. So there's a shutter here that pulls up and you can actually sit down, have some breakfast, have a coffee and watch your motorbike get worked on. I found out that they've only opened in May, so they've been going about five months, but eventually they should also be able to MOT your bikes in the future as well. BMW F800 GS, lots of motorcycle memorabilia around, as well as a few helmets for sale. Lovely little chill out areas with the Chesterfield sofas right at the front and the big window there looking out onto the high street. So the Bonneville's parked up there. All of the nice little nods, Indian motorcycle, Norton, Esso. It's like it's meant to be the Indian chief there as well and the bar section with a few more tables and a window looking out onto the high street as well. I love places like this. I remember when I first passed my test about 14 years ago, it was almost impossible to be able to find really good food and good coffee at a biker hangout type place. And now they're just popping up all over the place. It's an amazing thing. I cannot tell you how much how much I love places like this. Getting to mix having coffee and a bite to eat with motorcycles in a nice place just to chill out. That's priceless. It's been too long. Won't you come back to Riding in Grenada is uh, it's a trip because, first of all, the roads. We don't have roads without potholes. Every single road has got at least two or three potholes. Jerry would send me, why don't I have a top box on my bike? Because, you know, for the rain gear and yeah. what you want to hold up. Because they keep falling off. Because the, the rack on the back of the bike is rattling so much. Every time you go over a pothole, rack, 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 rack. So I've had two, two, <laughs> two top boxes literally just fall off the bike. So because... That's why I ride the car, the case, the, 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 the Versus. Because you need an adventure bike you, for you this need, kind of road. Yeah, you need to get over the road. The bike I had before was a Honda VFR, yeah. which I brought from here. I, had, uh, I bought it here, took it to Barbados, then I took it to Grenada. I because just love the bike. if you want a bike mm. and you're on Grenada, you can't get one. You yeah. can't get one of the bikes in Grenada. You have to actually go you okay, can. off to the US and you pick it up. You can get one, but you, you'll be lucky to get what you want. Because the people who are selling bikes in Grenada, they're selling, you know, like ro pocket rockets. Yeah. You know, Suzuki's and GSXR and da da da. da, da, da. All them. You want a bike that's a little bit different, like the Bonneville? Yeah. He brought that in. The two people I but, know have Bonnevilles, okay, so they bring them in. If there's a population of about 110,000 in Grenada, how many Bonnevilles do you think are on the island of Grenada? I can tell you exactly how many Bonnevilles. Yeah. Two. You, you know that for a fact? Yeah. And you know both of the owners. One belonged to my friend Champy, and he sold it to somebody else whose name escapes me, the other one. And the other one is Michael Reeves, Peter Reeves. And I went riding with him two weeks ago. Great bike. They're great for Grenada, the Bonnevilles. So if, if you're curious, let's say your dream bike is a Harley Davidson yeah. Road King, how do you get one in I Grenada? What go do you to do? My, I go to Miami, or I have somebody in Miami buy the bike for me and they ship it down to Grenada. They put it on in, a, in a container, and then the trouble starts, because the duty on the bike is at least 80% of the value of the bike plus the value of the freight. So when my brother wanted to send me that bike, that free bike that he was gonna give me here in England, it would still cost me 
1,200 or 1,400 pounds to ship it. When it gets to Grenada, the customs people would look at the bike and I'll say to them, my brother, it's a gift, I got it free. They said, never mind that, we see what it's worth. They have the blue book, they'll see what it's worth. And then they add on the freight and they charge me 80 to 100% of that. Everything in Grenada is three times the price that it is here. So you get given a motorbike yeah. by your brother, brother, Jerry. Yeah. You still have to pay, in essence, 100% yeah. of the, the value of yeah. the bike because yeah. of taxes. Yeah. So a gift doesn't exist. No. <laughs> That's no, not insane, when you're isn't it? And if you need to get parts, it can be a nightmare. The other day, I, wanted to, I had to get new tires. Now, you know, tires, I don't want to skin. Yeah. I want to spend, I want to get the best quality tire. What did I get? Nanking. That's all you can get. You think you can get Dunlop? If you can, if you're lucky, you might not. But when you need a tire, you need a tire. So I got the Nankings. Yeah, they'll do, but I would rather a proper, you know. So if there are only two Bonnevilles on the island, if yeah. someone needs a new clutch for the Bonneville. Yeah. They bring them in. They bring them in. They, they have a I deep. mean, you could be waiting, if you need a clutch, two months plus then. Because they don't, no one has stock of Bonneville clutches on the island then. No, no. but you, what you do is, like, if I have my brother, I will just tell him, Jerry, I need a clutch. He goes on eBay, WeMoto. In England. Here in England, and he gets it delivered the next day. This is why I say that, you know, tourists like yourselves, you come to Grenada and you use the word paradise. To me, paradise is eBay. <laughs> you can get something the next day on his cheapest chips. So my brother will get me whatever I need and put it in a FedEx packet or a mail packet. There the trouble starts, because when it gets to Grenada, the customs man is right next to me when I open the thing. He charges me and so on. So between buying it here, shipping it there and paying duty when you get there, everything is three times the price. And how long does it take to get from England to Grenada? Oh, uh, a week for the actual Okay, it's not week. bad. It's not, not bad. that bad. Yeah. Not, not bad, that okay. Bad. No. okay. But the, the cost is a, is a nightmare. But you're is, in Grenada. Is the, the trade-off worth it? The, the paradise yes. of living in yes. Grenada, is it? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I love living in Grenada. I, I, like I said, I've lived in 10 countries and I love spreadsheets. The other day I did a spreadsheet of all, all the factors in each country. The weather, the people, the food, the police, the crime, the healthcare, the economy, that, 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 that. And not surprisingly, Grenada came out as number one in my book. Yeah. This is highly subjective, yeah. right? But England was number two and Jamaica was number three. Yeah. But so I like different things in different countries. What I do like about England is it's civilized. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can get stuff easily. I like going out to different restaurants and so on and so on and so on. But one thing I'm amazed at England is the crime against bikes, the theft of bikes. Yeah. What, the bike theft? Yes. Oh, it's, it's off the scale. Jesus Christ, it, yeah, it's I know, mad. I know. Everybody's got three padlocks, two The Bonneville's out there. Mm. I have to make sure it's within eye shot. Yeah. Yeah, well, when you, you know. left the bike store on the corner, it's got the steering lock, which is yeah. a bit of a joke, yeah. and it's got the padlocks on it. I know, I know. We talked to a guy the other day, an a, a Uber rider mm. on a scooter. We were just chatting to him. He says he went up to a flat to deliver. I think it was the third or fourth floor. He put two padlocks and a heavy chain on it. And to go and deliver? Back, yeah. I know. When he came back from delivery, two padlocks and the heavy chain was on the floor and the, and the scooter was gone. And this is a crappy little scooter. You know, it doesn't even surprise me. Ah, uh, but doesn't I can't say that it's, we have no bike theft because in Barbados, my brother came to visit me. Yeah. And I had two bikes. Because, oh, you know, you have two bikes. I always have two bikes. So I had the Kawasaki 1100 yeah. and I had the Honda VFR, which I brought from here. So I had the two of them there. He arrived on the Sunday. It was Saturday. We go for an island ride on Sunday. Great time. Pictures. Da, 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 da. We come back into the house. Both of these bikes is, is the only one in Barbados. There's not another one like it. Each one. So I'm like, nobody's going to steal this. I didn't even bother put the steering lock on. Next morning at seven o'clock, he wakes me up, Brian. The bikes are gone. No. Came in and wheeled them down the road. Easy oh, They need to get them off the island though, because no, 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 yeah, you know no. why they've stolen them? Just for a just for a jolly. I got one back. Oh, we I went see. into the ghetto giving out, you know, um, is a reward for this bike, reward for that bike. Call me, no questions asked. Long story short, I got one back. The other one never came back. But England. Oh, England's another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy.
sent me this over a month or two ago this is a British company and they make the locks in the UK and this is their ultimate lock it's called the X3 and it's meant to be pretty much unbreakable hopefully I won't have to put it to the test but it's nice to know that this is protecting the bike that was a lovely morning getting to meet Brian Samuel who's an author over in Grenada and also his brother Jerry that was a pleasure chatting about stories in general but also the difference between biking over in Grenada and here in the UK and although it's a, a paradise island Grenada the difficulties with things that we just take for granted for example buying motorbikes in general full stop getting parts for bikes everything is more difficult because the population I think if I remember correctly is about 110,000 it's microscopically small I'm in London about an hour early to see Monica, so I'll just have a wander around. Time always flies in London because there's so much to see and do. I miss it. Every time I go away, even if it's just for a couple of weeks, I always love coming back into London. It's that buzz that you just can't replicate anywhere else.
Thank you. 